and welcome to Dishing It Up. I am Kim Gold and today I'm going to be preparing for you a traditional down-home Bahamian breakfast. And in order for us to have a traditional Bahamian breakfast, you can need your yellow grits, right? To go along with that, I'm going to make some tuna salad and we're going to add some steamed sausage. Well, like my people say, sauces. All right, and for those of you that have a sweet tooth, I'm gonna be preparing a guava rum pound cake with a nice guava sauce to go on top and to pair with it, a nice scoop of vanilla ice cream. But before we get to our breakfast, we are going to start preparing our guava pound cake. All right, but I just want you to see the ingredients that I have here for our cake. White sugar, white all-purpose flour, we have here our bacon powder, and for our wet ingredients, vanilla extract, milk, our eggs, our butter, and of course, the star of the cake will be the guava. So our first step to making this cake, we have to cream our butter and our sugar together. But what I like to do is I like to add the butter into the bowl first, just to give it a quick whip. And then I'll add the sugar in and we're gonna cream both of them together until it becomes like, like a pale off white color. I'm gonna show you. So the first thing I'm gonna do, as I said earlier, let's just cream our butter just for about a minute. No more than that, all right? You wanna start on our low speed. Just to break it down quickly. And now we're gonna increase the speed up just to smooth it out. Okay, that's good. Now just a friendly reminder, when you're making this cake, you wanna make sure that all of your wet ingredients come to room temperature because that is what's going to help the cake to form very well and also bake well. Now I'm gonna add our sugar in. We just wanna scrape down our bowl real quick just to get all of that butter that was on the side of our bowl into the sugar so it could be well combined. And this process usually takes about roughly five to eight minutes. And you wanna keep blending this up until it comes to like a nice palish white color. If you see that the mixture is still yellow, then you know you need to keep going, all right? Butter and our sugar is perfectly creamed, and now we're gonna add in our eggs, okay? You wanna add your eggs in one at a time. So we're gonna start with our first egg, like so. Add in our next. Well, two of them decided they wanted to drop in one time. That's okay. So we'll just blend those two together. Okay? Is we're gonna add in our vanilla extract and we're gonna blend that in. So what I like to do is I like to put down my baking powder first. So we're just gonna sprinkle that. And next we're gonna add our flour. I'll continue mixing this until we get a smooth and velvety consistency. Look how beautiful my batter look. Oh my gosh, look at that. That looks perfect. So now our last step is our milk. So we're gonna add that in. And you're gonna do the same thing that you did with the flour. You don't wanna start with a, with a fast speed because you'll get it all over. So you go with the lowest speed on your mixer and just combine it together. Just look at that. Look at our pancake powder. Nice and smooth and silky this is how your batter should look next we'll add the guava make sure everything is chopped up real nice and fine i'm actually going to use a spoon here right 
and I'm going to just generously place guava to the bottom of my pan just like this all right we're gonna start with our first layer just like that all right and we're just gonna give her a little swirl here okay just a nice little swirl remember now you're not a pastry chef you're a home baker all right, so you can do this any which way you like. If you just wanna put all your guavas to the bottom of the pan and just have the cake um, plain, that's fine also. There is no right or wrong way how to do this because at the end of the day, it's still gonna taste good. Okay, perfect, and we done. That didn't take long, did it? Now, before you put it in the oven, you wanna shake her up just a bit. Give her a little dap dap and we do this to take the air out of the pan, all right? So once you do that, now we're gonna place this in the oven. And this cake bakes for about 55 minutes to an hour. Now be sure to preheat your oven to 350 degrees before baking. What's trending? Lifestyles in the afternoon. 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 Coming this fall on the Zadnas Network. So now we're going to start our breakfast. We already got our cake out of the way. So we're gonna start preparing our steamed sausage and our yellow grits. We have here our vegetable oil to fry our sausage first before we steam it. We have some onions that we cut up earlier and we have some red and green bell pepper, but you know my people call it sweet pepper. We have some fresh tomatoes, we have our tomato paste, and we have here some celery and chopped goat pepper. And of course we have our salt, and this salt is going to be used for our yellow grits. You wanna make sure that your sausage is about this thick here. You can cut your sausage however you please, but today I'm gonna to chop it this way, which is in four pieces like this, all right? So the first thing we were going to do, we're gonna now go ahead and start frying our sausage. We have our vegetable oil preheating, and I think it's ready now, so we're gonna start frying our sausage for our steamed sausage, okay? Be very careful now. You don't wanna overcrowd your pot because you don't want it to start steaming when it's supposed to be frying. So we're gonna fry these on about, about a minute, a minute and a half on each side just to get it, you know, to a nice golden brown before we start our steaming process. You can flip it now, because remember we want like a nice pretty color on both sides. There we go, we're ready. Excellent. That's gonna have a nice, beautiful sear on it. Perfect. And like I say, this only fries for about a minute, a minute and a half, two minutes max, depending on how high your heat is. But we just wanna sear it on both sides. The steaming process is gonna finish cook the sausage. The next step is to fry our herbs. And we're gonna start off with our onion. Give that a little stir. Our bell pepper, which is our red and green sweet pepper, like my Bahamian folks love to say. Our fresh tomatoes. And our celery and goat pepper. And we're gonna fry this down until it becomes a bit softer. And then when that happens, we're gonna add our tomato paste to it and cook that out. Usually when you add the tomato paste 
to your frying pan when you're doing this, you wanna make sure you cook it for about two to three minutes. You know, just to cook out that very raw tomato paste flavor. You don't want that in your gravy, so you wanna cook that down for a while. Now that we've halfway cooked our herbs, we're now gonna add our tomato paste. And we're gonna cook this down for about roughly two to three minutes. You know, we wanna get rid of that very raw, sharp, tomatoey taste. So we're just gonna stir it here with our veggies and allow it to cook for about two to three minutes. That's all you need. And then after which we're gonna add our water and then we're gonna season it up. Our tomato paste seems to be pretty much fully cooked here. Now that we've fried it out properly, we're now going to add our water. We're going to slowly add it in. And stir it. This is now the gravy process to our steamed sausage. Okay? See that? Perfect. That looks good. All right, so our next step, while that's simmering, we're gonna now add our seasonings to the pot. So we're now adding our garlic powder, our onion powder, our black pepper, we also have a sprinkle of paprika as well. Add some salt. We stir that up. Look how she looks. Now I know when I do steamed sausage, I like my gravy not too thick, but not too thin, right in the middle. Okay, so this is how you would like your gravy to look. If you want it a little bit thicker, you will add less water. If you want it more thinner, you could add more water to it. The choice is up to you. There's really no wrong or right way how to do this. To finish up our gravy, we're gonna add just a couple, just some leaves of thyme here. And this is actually dry thyme I'm using. I saw my aunt do this, my mom do this. They will actually take the thyme, put it in a brown paper bag, and let it dry out and then cook with it. I don't know why, but it still works. And it tastes just as good as the fresh thyme. Okay, so we stir that in. That gravy looks absolutely delicious. Now we're going to add our sausage to this. Oop. We have our water here pre-boiling for our yellow grits. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of salt. Now we want to add our yellow bricks to our boiling water, salted boiling water. And we want to stir as we add it in. We want to stir it around until it's fully combined. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn down our bricks to a lower heat from medium to low. We're gonna put our lid on it and we're gonna allow this to actually steam and cook for about five minutes, okay? And now I'm gonna put a lid on it because we want it to steam for about five minutes and we're gonna take a break and when we come back, we're gonna get started on our tuna salad. I can see it. I can feel it. Grand Bahama, the bounce back. You have a clear vision. Yeah. What is it that you 
hope this show will do for the island of Grand Bahama and indeed the people here on this northern island. It will do exactly what bad news does. It reverses that and let people know that all hope is not lost. In the person of the Honorable Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis, right? Um, he's doing an excellent job. I'm seeing major hotels. I'm seeing large cultural shows. It's time for us to actually invest before we can ask someone to invest. There's a greater good and there is something bigger than me and you. Coming this fall, The Bounce Spot, only on the Zadnas Network. Okay guys, so we're almost finished preparing our breakfast. We have our steamed sausage and our bricks pretty much almost ready. So the last thing we have to do is we have to whip up our tuna salad. I already have my tuna already drained and flaked. We have our onion, we have a mixed bell pepper here going. We have both green and orange bell pepper, you know, for color. And we have our gold pepper, we have our lime, we have mayo, of course, and salt and black pepper. We're going to add our finely chopped onion. Just like that. Next, we're gonna add our orange and green bell pepper, but my people call it sweet pepper, and that's quite okay. We're gonna add a, just a little pinch of gold pepper here. We're gonna add a fresh squeeze of lime juice over this. Now I'm a person, I really don't like my tuna to be too sharp with the lime flavor, but there are people that do. So if you wanna add more lime to it, that's fine. I'm using like a large lime here. Going. And now we're going to add our salt. And our black pepper. Perfect. And next we're going to add our mayo to bring it all together. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna use our fork here and we're just gonna mix this all together. Ooh, this looks good. Absolutely perfect. If you like your tuna on a drier side, you can, you can use less mayo. As for me, I just like it pretty much just like this. You know, I don't like too much mayo, but then I don't want to go too less on the mayo because I don't want it to be dry, okay? And there you have it, guys. Our tuna salad is now ready. And there you have it, guys, our traditional Bahamian breakfast. I mean, just look how beautiful this looks. Our yellow bricks, buttery yellow bricks, our steamed sausage, we have a lot of herbs going on here, and our well-seasoned tuna salad. And don't forget, we still have our cake to finish. Congratulations to the happy couple. Divorce is fault-based, so meaning that either the husband or the wife has to be at fault. I am simply saying yes. a divorce <laughs> actually takes your dollar and cuts it down to 50 cents. Not all the time. I'm just saying, on a dissolution of the marriage, the parties are obviously going to go their separate ways. The question is, who is going to move out of the house and who will remain in the house? So there are several options available. Should he 
be made to still maintain that child who's been in the marriage. Or that Absolutely child and unequivocally. Really, Alex? I, I, I give advice and I tell people, I want you to know at the beginning, it is a traumatic event. I'm Ramona Farkasen, and this is The Legal Brief. Look how beautiful our guava pound cake looks. Just look at her. She's absolutely beautiful. So of course, the final step to the rum guava pound cake, we're gonna add some dark rum to this and we're gonna just gently pour it all over the cake so each cake can be well soaked with our dark rum. Don't be shy. To top the guava rum cake, I whipped up a quick guava sauce and let me tell you how I did it. I added cream cheese, powdered sugar, a little vanilla, and of course, my chopped guavas. And I blended it all together into a nice consistency. And we're going to garnish this with our delicious guava sauce. Just look at that. Mmm, mmm. Ooh, this gonna be good. And there you have it guys, our traditional breakfast, our dessert, and I had such a wonderful time cooking for you today. I'm Kim Gold, and I'll see you next time on Dishing It Up.